Dominique, et Nicanique s'en allait tout simplement au Dieu, pauvre et chantant. En tout chemin, en tout lieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu. Welcome to the third part of my little series about masturbation in philosophy and in religion. We have seen that only a few philosophers did not have a problem with masturbation. As example, Diderot, who said that masturbation is something absolutely natural and therefore pleasant, necessary and not common. J'aime la philosophie. Devriez lui préférer les philosophes. Even when it's useless, he meant that a relationship with the goal to procreate were only likely better. Diderot did not have such an apocalyptic view as Rousseau had. In contrary, he said it's a great pleasure and it would be idiotic to do without it. Qui de l'homme ou de la femme éprouve le plus de plaisir Lorsque vous vous grattez l'oreille avec le petit doigt, mm. qui éprouve le plus de plaisir L'oreille ou le petit doigt <laughs> Yes, it's a necessity, and as long as it's not drove controlled, you shouldn't renounce to it. Comment pouvez-vous à la fois défendre le plaisir individuel et dire que l'individu doit renoncer au plaisir pour le bien de l'espèce Ah oui, 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 c'est une contradiction. Oui. <laughs> As promised, I give you now a quote from a doctor called Zambaco. This was in 1881, and I warn you, it's really cruel to listen to it. I quote, On my travel to London, to the International Medical Congress, I had the chance to meet with Dr. Jules Guérin. Dr. Guérin? confirmed to me having healed young girls from the vice of onany after all classic treatment methods were useless by burning out the clitoris with the glowing wire. Me, Dr. Zambaco, have begun the experiment with a little girl named Lil. With a little stiletto heated on a petroleum lump, I burnt out her clitoris. On September 14th, I made this operation with an immediate success. The little girl said that the pain was unbearable and that she never again would do in it. Unquote. This other Dr. Guerin was an orthopedic and he worked on spinal shrinkage. It all started in the Victorian era, not long after some doctors of the era began promoting male circumcision. Many of them began to justify female circumcision using the same rationales. To deter masturbation, treat nervousness or hysteria, epilepsy, neurasthenia, and for general health. Even the well-known physician and inventor of the cornflake, Dr. Harvey Kellogg, jumped on the bandwagon to promote female circumcision. In his book, Plain Facts for Young and Old, Embracing the Natural History of Hygiene and Organic Life, Kellogg wrote, the object, female circumcision, is the same as that of circumcision in the male. In females, speaking of female masturbation, an application of pure carbolic acid to the clitoris is an excellent means of allaying the abnormal excitement. For now, a while I come back to the draw. For his whole life, Diderot wanted to be a doctor, and he was fascinated by the female and as well by the masculine sexual organs. In his roman D'Anambert's Dream, he wrote that ultimately the female and the masculine sexual organs were the same, but only those of the women were upturned. In those times raised the theory that the woman is a hysterical being, a being which is entirely possessed by, possessed by the passion, by the desire, the sexual appetite, and the need of an orgasm. Plato claimed that a woman's uterus wandered around her body, strangulating other organs and causing shortness of breath. 500 years later, the physician Galen would define this as hysteria. 
a uterine disease caused by sexual deprivation to which passionate women are particularly susceptible. Prolonged abstinence from sexual stimulation, it was noted, could produce such symptoms as anxiety, loss of appetite, insomnia, fainting spells, erotic fantasies, increased vaginal lubrication, swelling in the pelvic area, a tendency to cause trouble for others. Marriage was an oft-prescribed remedy. In more severe cases, removal of the ovaries was sometimes performed. However, manual stimulation by a trained physician producing healing paroxysms was deemed to be a temporary cure. By the mid-19th century, as women flocked to their doctors for this most popular treatment, hysteria became the most frequently diagnosed disease in Western medical practice. According to Diderot, the woman has no need to have an orgasm like a man, but does remain incessantly in an orgasmic state. Diderot was fascinated by women because he thought that due to this eternal orgasmic condition, the women were nearer to the absolute genius than the men were. Diderot was the anti-Rousseau. In the next chapter, we're going to see what art and psychoanalysis had in the beginning of the 20th century to tell us about masturbation. This was it for today. Don't forget to rate, to comment, and to subscribe if you don't have already done it. Ciao, have a nice day.